Hey everybody, welcome to this video. You are watching a compilation of some of the sewing patterns that I recently purchased. I've got about 10 to 12 different ones to show you. Initially going to film a like a you know a little intro with my face in it but then I figured you really just want to see the patterns so here they are I've taken them out um, from my storage envelope so these are just the covers I'll walk you through what I picked up in the last couple of months and kind of what drew me to these certain patterns and hopefully you'll like some of them and maybe drop a comment let me know which ones were your favorite First up, this is definitely more of a summer option. This is McCall's 7125. Right off the bat, love the crisscross in the back. I think this could be worn quite elegantly if the shape does turn out the way that it's illustrated or you can certainly wear it as an apron or um, over a t-shirt like how they've styled here. I believe this is 1990s. Let me have a quick look. Um, it is... 1994 there we go 1994 has a little bit of a zip right back here but again this crisscross tie thing really just steals the show maybe if you make it in a crepe or something a little fancier it could be really neat or um, for more casual style I would make it in a linen this one really caught my eye because of this tie front. They're calling it a three hour sarong dress from McCall's. And I just think this could go many different ways depending on your fabric choice. Again, if you want to veer towards that vacation, summer, this could be done in a sheer sucker. It could be done in a Swiss dot. I think that'll be really sweet, but I might do it in a printed linen. I'm really kind of going for that three quarter sleeve is what drew me in with the sides tie over here now note that this is a petitable pattern meaning there should be um, you know the correct adjustments for someone who is petite now with these patterns you can make it in the regular but that does come with petite adjustment options so it's kind of a really nice two for one this one is 1996 so we're definitely feeling the 90s with our first two patterns Another McCall's here. Didn't really um, purposely put them in this order, but here we go. This is a set of sportswear. Now I mentioned in my 2020 sewing resolutions, I want to get more into athleisure and sportswear. Couple of things uh, really drew me to this particular pattern. Number one, the zip jacket, but also this tie back shirt. Um, Old Navy sells something very, very similar. I want to give it a go in terms of sewing athleisure type of materials. So this is what I'm going to try. Now you do need to use some stretch fabric of course they need to stretch from here to here all the um patterns that ask for stretch will have some kind of a a stretch ruler and this one is i do not have a date for you guys but i'm pretty sure this is fairly recent from mccall's and still pretty accessible. I've seen some people make the leggings. I'm not a real leggings kind of person, but I'm definitely looking at the top and the zip jacket. Next up is something from Butterick. Now this is the Mary Osmond Sews Super Quick Butterick um, Reversible Raglan Style Coat. Now a couple of details really drew me to this particular coat. Number one, raglan sleeves should mean it's easy to fit around the bust. Um, you may know, you know, if you have a larger than quote unquote average bust or smaller than average bust, you may sometimes need to make a full bust or small bust adjustments. I've never done them they really intimidate me so I do try to look for patterns that have styling and construction that is more forgiving um, the average you know majority of commercial sewing patterns are made for a size B or C cup so if you don't fall into that range it can be a little iffy but with a coat with raglan sleeves does I presume to be a bit more generous in terms of fit. It has a wrap belt, super simple closures, has a couple of buttons. I love the fact that this is reversible. You get two lengths, a short or a long. This is a regular height uh, sewing pattern, so there are no adjustments for petite, but I don't think it will be a big deal. I haven't decided which length I'm going to make yet, but on me, of course, if I make it just as is, it will be a lot longer than the illustration shows. I love just the idea of this though and I'm quite excited to make this 
possibly my first proper coat. On to simplicity. Now this is again athleisure. This simplicity pattern is ballet, kind of yoga inspired. Couple of tops, um, short sleeve, oh actually mm, three quarter, maybe three quarter sleeves, um, slightly longer sleeves. This tank top with the ruching on the sides is what really drew me in. And then they've got some options for leggings that I'm not, you know, I don't really care for one way or the other. I do think that the styling is great. Um, I'm definitely going for that tank top first and then I might even consider this little popover in a sheer mesh or just something. It's, you know, it won't be for warmth or anything super functional, but more for style. Just um, another way to experiment with some athleisure and technical fabrics. Let me know if you've made this. I feel like a couple people I've seen online have tried this one out. Back to another Butterick pattern. This one is a Lizette collaboration. Now, forget the dress. I mean, dress is cute, but this coat though is what I'm very much into. I like the idea of the waterfall style in the front. There are no closures. It is a set in sleeve, which I am a little bit intimidated by, but we'll see how it goes. Now, my main struggle is going to be finding a type of fabric that will look good both from the front side and the back side because the underside of the fabric will show once the um, collar is attached. So it's got to be something that looks good and it's kind of reversible and doesn't make um, it's not too fussy so really kind of looking forward to this I'm not sure in the queue when I'm going to be making this versus the other reversible coat actually let me know which one you think I should make first this one or the other one uh, that was the retro reversible coat now this is a very interesting pattern because on one hand this does say simplicity and I bought it as a simplicity pattern but this is also from the indie sewing pattern brand Sew House 7. They call it the toaster sweater. Simplicity as usual gave it a number so whatever you want to call it I'm going to say Sew House 7 toaster sweater because that's really how I was first introduced to it. I do love the fact that Simplicity made it cheaper instead of buying it directly from the site. Now I am all for this entire outfit that the model on the front cover is wearing. I like the side slit that this sweater does have but you can make a couple of different variations. There is this mock neck option, there is more of a crew neck option and then you can do it with a uh, different banding a rib banding so loads of different options here from one simple basic uh, silhouette is quite relaxed I would say and um, I wouldn't say you know use anything too thick that might be a bit of an issue but like a medium weight knit this will be great for that transitional time Oh, I didn't tell you, uh, this is 2007 from Simplicity, so should still be available. This house coat is super duper cute. They call this a house coat, clearly, you know, vintage. Um, and it is lined on the inside. You can do it in a quilted fabric if you would like. They've got this one illustrated in a corduroy, but you can also make this as an outside coat if you want to. They did call this a house coat at the time. If you are from that era um, or you have experience with that, let me know, like when do you wear a house coat? You just wear it around the house kind of thing? I'm not quite sure. I'm super into this idea of like look more luxurious or you know, slightly fancier houseware that is what I'm calling it. So this one, Butterick, um, pretty simple if you look at the line drawing on the back. It is again a raglan sleeve. It is also why I chose it, trying to, you know, not do an FBA adjustment if I don't have to. You can do a mandarin collar like they've sought here. You can do a Peter Pan collar or you can omit the collar altogether. It is a straight cut, which I'm hoping won't be too much of a problem over the hips, but um, it does have simple bust stars. You can do patch pockets in the front. That's pretty cute and um, should be a fairly straightforward pattern. I want to say this is most likely 1960s. 
Let's go back to McCall's. This is Easy McCall's and it comes as a set. I think online they call these things now cords or coordinate sets. You can certainly make it out of the same fabric and call it a cord. How cute is this gingham ensemble with the little white flats? I think that's adorable. This is much more kind of a career lady oriented. Um, now, what drew me to this one is the top. I'm hoping to make some more spring summer tops I can wear that's handmade. And it has the button back. Is it really ideal? Probably not but I like the way it looks. So we're gonna see if I can actually get into this by myself buttoning up uh, the back buttons. But um, this is also a petite a bowl, uh, sewing pattern, so that certainly drew me in. Um, it is important, I have made other tops that are not petite size with petite adjustments and it just the torso was too long, the buttons were kind of funny, the sleeve holes, like everything was just a little bit off. So it is important if you do a slightly more fitted top to get it in either, you know, like your correct height, if you will. The pants are kind of cute. They are pull-on elasticated. Um, there are no line drawings on the back, sorry guys. But this is, let's see, pull-on pants, capri, and skirt. So all the bottom options are just pull-on elasticated waist. Um, the back does have a vent if you make the skirt, but I'm kind of drawn to this one. It's really cute, this entire ensemble. What do you think? Would you wear this? So I bought this sewing pattern quite a while ago and I completely forgot that it never came. It finally showed up sometime this week. I'm like, oh yeah! I got this. Now, I got this because it is hard to find sewing patterns that are proportionately sized. Meaning, some of these ones um, that you can find vintage or retro do, do come with a average height proportion size and then a tall proportion size and then a petite proportion size which is amazing all you tall girls out there if you're sewing look for retro or vintage patterns um, Butterick Simplicity Vogue they have all done them I think in the past so do look out for them um, they are a rare gem but if you can find them in your size I think they're certainly worth you know your trouble and not having to do the adjustments yourself okay Back to the pattern. So this is a set of blouses in um, two kind of shapes. You've got one with a placket V collar. It's got some really interesting French darts that are these long darts, side slits. The other option is more of a secretary pussy bow blouse kind of style with this fold over little necktie, which I think is, is quite okay. Um, I don't know if the cuffs have a button. Buttons are one of my arch nemesis, let's see. Over blouse, shape collar, long sleeve, or three quarters. Yeah, button and band cup. So it does have buttons. I will just have to deal with it. So this is the back line drawing. Um, the long sleeve does have shaping darts at the back. The shorter sleeve, this version, does not have back shaping. But we'll see how this one goes. I'm pretty excited to give this a go. Like I said, in my 2020 sewing resolutions, I'm really looking for some staples I can make and perfect and just make a whole bunch of them in different colors. Last pattern I have to show you here is not in the original envelope. This is from the indie patent brand Friday Patent Company. This is their Cambria Duster. I composited and made this cover page myself, um, taking from different pieces from the website and the information that I would want to know. I got this printed um, because I'm subscribed to Creative Bug, the online like craft tutorial website subscription service. And Friday Pattern Company has just put out a tutorial for the Cambria Duster that came with a pattern. So if that makes any sense to any of you. Anyways, this is not how it would come if you bought it from them directly. I just made this thing so I can store it and know exactly the info I am looking for which also gives me a good way to show you the way that the um, duster will look. Now, I do already have a fabric in mind for this pattern. 
um, it seems pretty easy. It's unlined. I like the shawl collar kind of situation. I am hoping to make it in time for um, a trip that I'm going to take. Fingers crossed, it all turns out. It has pocket detail like a slant slash pocket. That's a, a patch pocket but a slant um, entry. It's got a split down the side. It's got roll up sleeves if you want to. And um, I'm super thrilled to make this. I think this will turn out great and be super duper versatile. All right, everybody, so these are the sewing patterns that I have recently added to my collection. Um, bit of a binge, but I'm really thrilled about all of them, like just excited. What are you most excited about? Like if this was kind of your DIY, what would you make first? Actually, you know what? Leave me your top two. Which two were your favorites from this video and or which two would you be excited to see made up first? Um, these will be at some point, hopefully soon, added to my online Flickr album, which is where I keep all like pictures of all the sewing patterns I have. So you guys can have a look if you're interested, and for anyone else who's just curious and want like a quick reference, I try to keep that um, album as updated as I can. So these will be photographed and up on there soon. Until next time, have an awesome day or weekend or night, whenever that you're watching this, and I can't wait to see you in our next video. Bye for now.